Let's follow the trail here of the mountain. Where's the mountain go? Oh! Okay, this is dangerous. This is really dangerous. Okay, so what we just found is a cache of gold and weapons, but that means there could be a dragon nearby. So let's see. Oh, no! Ladies and gentlemen, how is it going today? It's great to have you here. My name is Scrote, and we are taking a look at Keeper RL here. I thought we would just do a little, you know, maybe two to four part, just a quick little Let's Look series on this awesome game. I've been having so much fun with this. This is essentially uh, a dungeon simulator. It's got like some roguelike and RPG elements. Um, it's, I consider it a mix of Dungeon Keeper, or sorry, yeah, Dungeon Keeper meets Dwarf Fortress. It's like if they merge together and threw in some roguelike elements, that's sort of what you get. Um, we've got very cool uh, dungeon management. It's like a, you, you'll dig deep into mountains. You'll build dozens of rooms and corridors and traps. And, um, you know, you'll have minions that you'll eventually recruit based on what you build. And you'll train them. And you'll craft weapons and armor. Uh, you can capture prisoners the whole and torture them and all this stuff. It's great. Uh, the whole point of this is you're like the bad guys. You want to build the evil stuff in the game. Uh, you know, you build like your evil lair and your torture rooms and all of your you know, libraries and your recruitment areas. And then you go out into this procedurally generated world, this this huge map, and you can build like armies and form teams and command them yourself and go out and there's a, you know, different races that they generate like uh, humans and elves and dwarves and gnomes and there's random like powerful creatures like dragons and ogres and you know, like these big tree ant guys and stuff. Uh, it's really cool. It's just a whole bunch of fun. The sweet thing is after you build your you know, dungeon, like, if it's successful, then you can play the game in adventure mode, just like Dwarf Fortress, where, you know, where you go in and you play as just one guy, and you can try to, you know, defeat your your own fortress you've built. It's pretty fun. So we're going to go with Keeper mode here, and we're going to give this a whirl. So, oh, and, uh, you know, if this is a series that interests you, or you're very curious about it, or you have it and you've been having a hard time playing it, there's not a lot of tutorials on it, but I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on it. Um, so yeah, definitely feel free to follow along and give me a thumbs up, uh, you know, like the video if uh, you guys are into this type of series, uh, just something I'm playing around with. So let's, let's hop on in here as a keeper and get this baby going. So I've, I've only played through this a couple times and, uh, you know, the random number gods can wreak havoc on you in this game. Let's change our name, uh, to Scro, 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 uh, Scro, this sounds awful. Scro, Timius. Oh, yeah. Scrotimius. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait. Scrotimius. Take two. Inner key. Inner key. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. And luckily, we can pause and whatnot. Uh, so, let's see. So, Warlock, you were dabbling in the dark arts. A tad, I see. Welcome to the Valley of Fanta Cruz. Oh, even that's different. Cool. Where you will have to do what you can to keep yourself together. I see what they did there. Build rooms, storage units, and workshops to endorse your minions. The only way to go forward in this world is to destroy the ones who oppose you. And so we can use the mouse, blah, blah, all this stuff. I already know all this, so I can explain it as we go. Uh, so we've got the game paused right now. This is the game world as we know it. Not much going on. We can see some, some resources here. We've got some ore. We've got some granite. Uh, we've got some iron ore. Definitely good stuff. More down here. Uh, gold is a key resource for sure in this game. It's what you end up paying your minions with. So here's our resources down here. Here's gold, here's the wood, uh, iron ore, granite, and mana. And mana is what we generate by building a library, and our keeper will, you know, study and practice there. So the first thing we want to do... Oh, and by the way, these are little imps we start with. These are sort of our handymen, right? You know, if we want to chop trees or dig, they will do the work. And we can summon more imps up here for just... Every, every time we get another imp, it costs more mana. So right now it's just 20 to get another one. But that goes up really quick. So the cool thing in this game is you can right-click. See, right now we're kind of like playing, you know, the god. We're like the overseer. If we want, we can right-click on any any of our creatures, and we can control them directly. So, you know, if I wanted to take control of the keeper, well, now I'm playing as the keeper. You can see fog of war changes and whatnot. Uh, we may be a little stuck here. Uh, we can cross right there. I kind of want to... Oh, but you see here, this could be risky. It looks like there is water that goes up in here. So let's see here. Let's leave the keeper real quick. I want to find a good starting spot. I'm thinking right down here. Is, yeah, this is where we're going to do it. So up at the top right of your screen, you've got some tabs here. The, the first tab is sort of all the things we can build and do. So we can dig, do storage, treasure room. You know, it's pretty much everything, even traps. Uh, traps are a huge part of the game. 
Uh, the second tab is our minions and how we make new teams and we can see Right now these don't do anything, but these you know if we wanted to see tasks We could see the order of tasks that you know all of our minions are trying to do uh, The third tab is sort of our study tab so many more imps so sorcery, you know it uh, Let's us know what our keeper can cast based on what we've trained and the library once we start once we build a library then this will let us train new technologies and stuff like how to craft or make two-handed weapons or learn advanced spells by spending mana pretty cool and uh, this this fourth tab shows us who is who populates this world so we've got humans lizards elves dwarves humans and these are all their city names and we will encounter them right now so all we have on the world map is just this little area we've uncovered all the rest is you know totally procedural we don't know what's out there so let's get started let's get digging uh, I want to I want to start I think right down here, actually. Let me control this guy, and let's just go look down here real quick. Yeah, look at this, like a perfect little spot. Okay, so let me leave that guy. And we we will start by digging straight in. Now, I don't want to hit water. That would be bad. So we'll go here, and I'm going to start by just making a corridor. So you have to think about this game in terms of traps and the fact that you will be raided. You know, we are the bad guys. Everybody else is good. You know, so they may eventually, if we do too much or we explore too much, we'll, we'll catch their interest. If we hoard too much gold, uh, you know, different races may come after us, you know, sending their heroes and whatnot. So, okay, here is our first little corridor. I'm thinking we will start by, let's get this granite. So you can hold shift and left click when you're in dig mode to make, uh, to draw a square. Very useful to know. Shift is sort of the universal selector. Anything you're building with, you can hold shift uh, to build more. The uh, the imps are a little slow sometimes when they have to mine. So another cool thing is we can go to the second tab here and we can actually click on our imps and we can see they are all level one. And normally you would see the task that your minion is is undergoing here, but uh, we only have four and imps, imps are just manual workers, so they generally don't show anything there. So in fact, let's go ahead and get a couple more imps here. So what you do is you, you click on this, and then you you left-click where you want your imps to go. Now, to note, you can only summon things on on uh, tiles that you own, and that is denoted by this little red dot. That means you own it. So just something to note there. Okay, so we've got our first little room. I may use this room for traps. So I may continue along here another room like this. And then this first opening, this is actually going to be our training room. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to build... I'm going to set this up in such a way that we can, we'll have traps here. This will be pretty sweet. Maybe like this. Uh, let's see. Do something like this. And I'll, I'll explain more about this later. Like I'm digging hallways for boulders and stuff to roll, which uh, is a very nice thing. Boulders are a great little trap that you can build. Oh, I just love them. Okay, so this first room, this is going to be our training room. I want to make sure it's symmetrical. One, two, three, one, two. Perfect. So the training room... This is like an important room, and a great tip when you're first starting to build into the mountain is uh, build your training room as one of the first main rooms. Because if enemies breach your, you know, your dungeon, um, you want them, like, all of your big mean baddies that you've been training, they're going to be in here working their asses off. So enemies will have to encounter them first, like right off the bat. Uh, this was kind of a weird place for me to put this because we do have ore right here. That's okay, though. I'll figure something out. So this will be our training room, and... What we're going to do here is, I think we're going to branch off to the right. Just like this. Maybe come up here a little bit. Uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, we'll do like this. Get another good size room going here. Make sure I am... I like to stay symmetrical with my rooms as much as I can. This critical, man. You just got to do it. We're going to double corridor this one for just a squeech. It's okay. We'll, we'll figure something out to do with it. It'll be sweet, you guys. I promise. So, let's see what we need. Oh, you know what else we need to do? We need to cut some trees down because we're going to need wood. Now, here's the thing. If you cut too many trees down, like you will invoke the wrath of tree spirits. So, what I recommend is to like not cut too many down in any one area. Kind of diversify a little bit and spread out your cutting. It's a good thing to do. In fact, I'm going to summon one more imp. So, we have seven imps right now. And I really, I really enjoy the music in this game. It's really great. It's just, it's calming, and then sometimes it just gets really fast-paced. 
So I don't want to plan too much more out from here, and here's why. Um, there could be water anywhere, and I don't want to... I don't want to have an unneeded opening to our... I want this to be the only opening to our dungeon, essentially. Alright, so we're going to need a storage room. Okay, we're going to be getting that up real soon here. In fact, I'm going to build the storage room. Uh, let's see, we'll build... Yeah, we'll build it coming right off of here. Like this. We'll do... This will be a pretty good sized storage room. That's what I'm thinking. I'm not sure what we're going to do here. This looks ugly as all get out. What I did right here. Oh, man, that just looks so bad. Oh, Jesus, it looks so bad. You know what? Let's see. Let's do like that. Oh, I like this with this one spot right here because we can install doors. That's great. So this is going to be the storage down here. Now, this is so much simpler than games like Dwarf Fortress, you know, where you could have, like, infinite different storage possibilities. This one is either, you know, you've got equipment, you've got resources, or you've got everything. So I want this to be all resources. So again, you know, you can just hold shift and just drag that bad mother down. And our imps will start to prioritize resources. You can see here, if we go to show tasks, this is what our imps, this is kind of like all the tasks in the queue right now. Kind of nice to see it sometimes, especially as your dungeon gets bigger. But yeah, we need to get stuff rocking as quick as possible here. So I want to I want to work on a library next. And let's see here. You know what? We're going to put the library just coming just coming right down here. The cool thing in this game, any you can just press these hotkeys on this main tab at any point and it'll take you to that tab and to that action. So I, I very much dig that. All right. So let's see. Going to our library. Again, we're going to we're going to build a few traps here. I really like the boulder traps. We're going to make good use of that, I think. And then this will be our library room. Hang on here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. No, that's too big. I don't want it that big. Hang on. Second guessing myself here. I want this to be four. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Yeah, just like where the traps will be. So this will be our library room. I'm going to build it to where a size I'll eventually want to expand it to. It's going to be pretty big. And that's okay. So I also want to get the workshop rooms built. Oh, see, here we go. We're coming up to water. Got to be careful. And I want to get I want to get to this gold too. So we may be having to navigate around this water quite a bit. So once this one's built up this way, what I'm thinking we may come off the side here. I wonder if there's a way to speed this up past normal, you know? Get it going just a little bit faster. So it looks like we've cut the wood. Now that we have a storage room, they'll start to uh, they'll start to grab that room or that wood as we want to build some things. So let's do that. Let's see. Training room's going to require some uh, iron ore here. So we'll start this off as a smaller training room. We'll go three, one, one, two, three. Down like this. That'll be it. So, and you can go negative resources. It's one of the things I really like. Oh, and let me explain this, by the way. There's a day-night cycle. So right now it's day, and it works by ticks. Like, everything works on a tick base. Uh, all your creatures have different uh, speeds. So, like, if I were to control one of these guys, I think they should have a speed. Yeah, so you can see their speed. So it takes uh, 200. So I imagine every action they take is, like, two ticks. Or, or maybe they get two actions a tick. I'm not quite sure what that means, but... All that comes into play, so you can see it just ticking down here. And once daytime ticks down, then it's nighttime. And that different creatures will come out at night, different things will happen at night, and, you know, other races will sleep. And that's a great time to go raiding. That's what I've found out. Alright, so we got to get this library going real quick here. So we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to build one that's not as big. Oh, I can't, uh, hang on, I can't do it just yet. I need to wait for a little bit more room. So you can see here, as they build... Uh, the, the inner squares become sort of like the 100% efficiency area that creatures can work in. So you'll see once they fill these last three out, uh, that this will become 100%. If you look down at the bottom right, the efficiency. So as creatures are walking over these, they will train. And that efficiency dictates and how quick they train. Okay, so we need to get this granite. We need to come up here and get this gold. So let's come off of this room. And let's go straight up here like this. Perfect. Yeah, we'll just we'll gooch this gold like crazy. It takes the imps a little bit longer to get the gold. Ah, oh, this is worthless right here. Let's go ahead and dig that out. That, that became stupid. This is going to be a weird room. 
This may not be a very used room on my part. I like being able to put doors down. Kind of screw yourself over sometimes. So you can see all these. Oh, these are not 100% efficiency yet. Okay, they need to grow a little bit more. That is my bad. All right, now we can get the library going. So let's start that up. In fact, we're going to go two and two. We'll start a library like that. And you'll notice the keeper. Once we build the very first library square, our keeper, this is us. You can see here, Scrotimius the Keeper, we're level 5. He will come over here to the library and he will start studying. And as he studies, we'll gain mana, which then we can use to... Uh... Oh yeah, we need a dormitory. We need a dormitory. Okay, we'll make this the dormitory. How perfect. Just going to do this whole thing. We're going to be way negative in the wood. Oh, big time. Okay, so we're going to need to cut some more wood. Let's get a little bit more here. And maybe it's down here some. Okay, so we're starting to make good progress here. You can see we have not explored much of the map, but we are getting the, the the beginnings of our keep, of our dungeon. This is when it starts getting exciting. I love this as we start getting stuff built. So you can see now we have the, the beginnings of our library coming into fruition here. So our keeper is going to be studying not very efficiently right now. And the cool thing is that like as we recruit other minions and stuff, you know, they'll come study with us. So we also need a treasure room. One thing I like to do... Oh yeah, I was like, this looks so ugly. What is this? I forgot they're going to be traps. Let's build a treasure room right off the side here. This will be perfect for a treasure room. So we'll get that. Uh, we'll get and, and, and once you build a treasure room, then your imps will prioritize picking up the gold and moving it into the treasure room, which I do love. So we're also going to come up here. I'm essentially digging our way to these resources. Sometimes, you know, sometimes the resources really dictate the way that your dungeon is going to look. Now, I don't want to get too much gold, because if we hoard too much gold, then we will attract, uh, I forget what it is, like the, the dwarves maybe, or the gnomes, or the humans. One of them will start to attack you when you get too much gold. So, just be wary of that. No, I'll be so wary. Let's go ahead and branch this out this way. See if we can do something like this. Nice big room there. Wait, wait, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, perfect. Oh yeah, we're, oh yeah, it's coming along. We've got an area for our dormitories. So you'll notice up at the top of the screen here also is very interesting things. It's sort of telling us the goings on of our dungeon. So I want to put some torches up. We want torches everywhere if possible. I like having torches. I think they are very, very helpful. Let's see here. Do a little hallway torch. Sometimes you have to, like, click the torch a bunch to get it to go into the spot you want. It's very strange. I like my torches to all be the right direction. Come on. There we go. Get some torches going on in here. No? There we go. And you? No? Come on. Sometimes I wonder if it's, like, how I move... Like, how you move your mouse dictates where the torch goes. Or is it just random? I don't know. It drives me nuts sometimes. Like, what's going on, man? There, oh, I guess you just click. Okay. And so, torches are great to have. It will start to, you know, light up your dungeon. Make it look pretty legit. That's what you want. And this way, it'll clear up a bunch of the fog of war as well. Always good to clear out that fog of war, man. Come on. I'll go ahead and unpause this now that we got torches coming in here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I can't get one. There we go. It's like, I can't make it go where I want. So here's an interesting thing, a little tip. Killing a leader greatly lowers the morale of his tribe and stops immigration. So I, I'm guessing as long as you let the enemy live, you know, you will keep running into, uh, you know, more of them. They will keep immigrating more, just like we're immigrating more. So we don't have any minions yet. Oh, and, and right when I say that, we just got an orc. Here it is. Where is he? Why don't I see him? There he is. So we just got an orc. He is a level 7 orc. Uh, they come with no equipment. That's why we want to get crafting like as soon as possible. So this is cool. Watch what this orc does. This is fan super fantastic, you guys. He's going to come over here. He'll put a bed down in the dormitory, and then hopefully he'll start training. In fact, uh, I would like to just go ahead and get one more row on the training room here. Just to... In fact, hell, let's just get that done. It'll be better if we have more. I want it to be... Okay, no, it's 100% efficiency now. Okay. 
Oh, look at this. We got our first Orc Shaman. Now, he should come study with our Keeper to help us generate mana. And we got another Orc. So, you can see here we got two Orcs, one Shaman. Now, you will have a cost associated. So, you can see here, here's where the gold comes into play. So, this is ticks, just like we have turns. Like, it's nighttime right now, and we don't really even have a force yet. It's kind of scary. Uh, but after this many ticks, we will have to pay gold, and this will slowly move up the amount of gold we have to pay. Based on, you know, just what's going on in our dungeon and stuff. So I'm thinking I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build our workshops down here. So let's go ahead and get the workshops dug out. Uh, we'll probably do, oops. We'll probably do something like this. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You know what? I don't want them to be that... I don't want them to be super wide. I'm thinking... Like this. And then we'll put another one here. And let's see. We'll do this one more time. Because eventually you can have a bunch of workshops. And let's see. This one will connect here and here. And this will be... A storage room, I think. Yeah, just like a long, skinny... Yeah, perfect. It can just be a really long storage room, and they're all going to connect to it. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's going to be nice. So you can see we've hit, we have 367 gold. We are definitely short on a lot of other resources. But this is what we're digging out right now, so this should get us back up into the plus. We're going to need some more trees. I'm feeling pretty okay that we can clear out the trees in the front there. So we've got our orcs training, and these guys, you know, by training, they'll level up and stuff, which is super, super rad. All right, so what do we need for more library? Why can't we... Okay, so we need more trees. So we might... Uh, I think all the digging and getting ore is killing our prioritization. I want to get one more imp. Some people say don't get too many imps, but... You know, I don't mind right now. And in fact, let's go ahead and, and do some training. So let's go ahead and get crafting. And uh, I think let's go ahead and get iron working, because we're going to want a forge to build weapons and stuff. That's going to be first on our list, so we can do that here. Let's get a Manufactory. Uh, the Forge. Oh, we're going to be so negative in this stuff. Oh my gosh. The Workshop uses wood. Okay, well let's wait till they get a little bit more of this collected. So we're going to need Iron Ore to build the Forge. I love this. Look, you can see the, the beds. They're, they're getting the dormitory going. Okay, so we got... Uh, we got a decent little thing going here. Uh, we, we've been getting some recruits. We're up to four Orcs. We're getting some better mana. We got another Shaman just now. Always good. Shamans can cast spells, although I, I haven't gone too deep down that path with them before. So this Shaman... Uh, yeah, so he's got healing, and he can do sorcery at an expert level. So if I control this guy... Uh, okay, he doesn't actually have anything yet. I was going to try to cast a spell. Oh, okay. We just chatted with an imp. All right. Anyways. Let's let our guys... You know, just just uncover some stuff here. Oh, yeah, look how much... I love how quick this is. Like, we already have all this dug out. We, we have a good bit of action going. We've got some recruits coming in. Okay, we are pulling in some of this now. So let's go ahead and build our forge. Our forge is going to be this whole area. People, I know this is really big. In fact, let's see here. We'll just do the middle part for now. Smaller forge so we can. it won't totally wreck us. And let's go ahead and get a workshop going. Oh, there's water down here. Balls. Oh, but that's okay. It's self-contained. That is A-OK. -okay. We will just work around that. You know what? No problems. And let's go ahead and get a equipment storage in here. We'll just go all the way across. So this works out. I mean, all these guys can, can reach things. Or should be able to. Let's get some torches in place here. Come on, torch. And we'll put one right there. That's fine. I just love how easy it is to do the designs and the layouts. Oh, I just really dig it. And so what we want to do is get some goblins. By putting up some of this uh, manufacturing stuff, we hopefully will get some goblins, and the goblins will hopefully start to work on this and start crafting us some stuff. That's the thought. That's what we want. Let's just go ahead and get some hallway torches up here. You know, we just want to get a few here and there. So we're kind of lucking out in that we ha Oh, we just got an ogre, you guys. Check this out. Look at this ogre. And I bet you he is going to go and craft. Yeah, he wants to craft. But you know what? Uh, I'm going to tell him to train. 
We just got a goblin, so I'm going to get the goblin in the forge. And let's just see if we're going to get some more goblins, maybe. We'll just we'll let him be the only one, you know, gathering stuff right now. Okay, so we still need more wood. We still need more wood. My god, okay. Let's get a bunch. We really need it, like, really bad. Wow, you know what? This is so weird. Like, the other times I've played, I know I almost never had any orc shamans. But now we've got a bunch of them. But this is great, because now our mana's going to go up a lot quicker. And you can see here, we just produced our first sword. There it is, right there. <laughs> it's so cool. So hopefully, an imp will come over, pick up the sword, pop it over here. Here he goes, look at that. Now it's there. Now the cool thing is, our minions will automatically equip themselves. So like this orc, he may be coming to pick up this sword. Or this shaman might. Yep, so there he goes. So here's the cool thing. Now we can click on the equipment, and he is wearing a sword that gives him plus 8 damage and plus 3 accuracy. I love it. I just love how automated the whole system is. Uh, you know, once you get things set up and rocking. So we just got another orc. I really like having orcs. Okay, so let's see what we're going to need here. Um, we've got our library. I just want to... Let's get an overview of what we got. We've got our library. We're not making traps yet. Let's go ahead and see if we can train really quick on something else. Um, yeah, let's get traps trained. And let's get sorcery trained. Okay. Traps w means that our guys will start making traps... I just don't remember if they make it at the four. I think the workshop is what they make traps at. Yeah, so the workshop produces leather, traps, first aid kits, and other stuff. The forge will make uh, iron weapons and armor. The laboratory will, was alchemy, like potions, you know? And the jeweler is what you can make, like necklaces and amulets and rings. That give you all sorts of cool stuff. So we need to get ritual room, beast lair. I would like to get a beast lair, like as soon as possible. So let's see. Uh, we could use one of these, Rube. This would make a great beast layer right here. It's going to take... Okay, what we need to do is prioritize getting this wood. I'd like to see our wood count go up. Because I'm going to put a beast layer right here, so let's do it. This is going to be it. Fantastic. So that'll give us that. So this will start attracting beasts like werewolves. Uh, I think... I, and I, I want to say maybe you'll get other things like bats... And, like, these, these wolves, I want to say. Like, normal wolves. You know, normal wolves and stuff. It's pretty sweet. Alright, let's get some torches in the supply room. Just realize we don't have any in there. And let's also go ahead and start getting some doors built. So that we give the enemy a hard time to get over here. Yeah, it's, I mean, we're putting in a good bit of doors right now, but... You know, that's what I want... Especially to get to some of our important stuff, like treasure room, our library, our workshops. We'll just keep everybody and that gold down there. I don't want anybody to get that gold. <laughs> there we go. So we'll have a bunch of doors. And yeah, man, we are producing a sword. We got another sword, heavy club. So this is good because we really need people to start being equipped. So the eyeball, uh, this lets you spot an area. Let's, it's kind of like a way to spy. It does cost mana to place them. But we're going to place a few just right outside of our fortress, of our dungeon. Oh yeah, we are coming along here. We are really coming along. So let's take a look at our next payout. So in about 200 ticks, we're going to owe a good bit of gold. And the way to get gold really well is to take uh, raiding parties out at night and go exploring. So you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's just We're going to be doing all sorts of stuff right now. Oh my gosh. Uh, let me see here. What I want to do is go ahead and set up a task to get us a little bit more gold not much I don't I just don't want to hoard too much at any one time and let's go ahead and let's grab all of this one, two, three. I want to I'm hoping I'm really hoping that we don't hit water or anything <laughs> I mean we're, we're so close we are like embedded in all this watery stuff so what we're gonna do here let's take a look our ogres we want to find one who's got some equipment on Whoops, let's try this guy. Okay, so he's got a sword. So I want to make a new team. Uh, let's add him to the team, and let's go take a look at some of our orcs. Let's get some of the, the higher leveled ones. We'll just add a few in there. And I think that'll be good. And now let's command our team. So now I am the ogre. So I can use the arrow keys. And so you can see uh, my team automatically falls in line with me. This is like, I love this aspect of this game. It's so great. Like, you immediately, we, we lose the ability to be the keeper at this point. 
So you can see another orc just joined us. And now we're just this group. Like, we don't get to see what's going on, you know, in the dungeon. So what we're going to do in this mode, it's cool because you can click to move. So we're going to explore around us a little bit. Like, let's follow... Let's follow the trail here of the mountain. Where's the mountain go? Oh! Okay, this is dangerous. This is really dangerous. Okay, so what we just found is a cache of gold and weapons, but that means there could be a dragon nearby. So let's see. Oh no! Oh my god! Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we're going to stop this episode. We're at the 30 minute mark. Uh, we're going to kick the next episode off with, with having to deal with a dragon. Not only that, but we have a cache of what very well could be legendary weapons. Like, look, right here where I'm at is Firindir. So watch this. I'm going to pick that up. Oh god, you're going to regret this. Oh no! <laughs> so we already have it equipped. And uh, we have a dragon. So we got we to gotta hightail it out of here and hope it doesn't chase us. So, yep, this is where we're going to be kicking off the next episode. If you enjoyed this, if you like this kind of game, uh, you know, hey, thumbs up the episode. That lets me know that you guys are interested. And uh, drop comments if you have questions. And hey, until then, you know, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next episode. So you guys have a great one. Take it easy and stay classy.